Ready? Welcome everyone to the Town of Brookfield Select Board meeting Thursday, August 29th, 2024. This meeting is being recorded. A uh, reminder, the state primary election is set for Tuesday, September 3rd. Polling hours are 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Town Hall. Uh, warrants. Warrants to... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Please stand and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Who wants to read? Do you want to read the warrants, uh, run? All right, thank you. And item number one on the agenda, town hall office closures on election days, rescind vote 229-24 and pack it. So back on 229, we made it so the town hall offices weren't so much closed, but employees had the option to work from home on those days. And now we're discussion is to whether we want to keep that or remove that well I asked to put it on so I'll start um, it was my thought that most people were working from home but the bulk of them wouldn't need to work from home it's my understanding Lori the accountant as well as the treasurer are both coming in and their offices are not interfering with the election um, and speaking with the tax collector she said she could do either way but she has a door to her office that wouldn't be affected by the election and talking to the town clerk he said that as long as people are not in the main hall mm -hmm. he didn't have a problem with it so i thought in all fairness that we should open it up the only issue that i could find uh, is the assessor's office so we yes. actually talked about this at the department head meeting and that what that Mike really kind of took charge on that and said the only two issues are just tax collector and Patty yeah but in speaking to the tax collector there's also the side door to her office that could access the exterior yeah. of the building so really the only one would be the assessor's office that I would say would not really be able to come in and function in her office so. The, um, and I don't know what we, if we, and if anything was really made concrete, but the only issue with Patty that came up is she doesn't really have an option to work from home either. She also has a lot of flexibility with her hours, and we right. talked about just closing Maybe the change, office and, for the and day changing and her swapping hours for the rest, day yeah. out. So she has that flexibility. So okay. Yeah, that's I think the only that office the that I see would be a problem affecting the election. One of the other things we had discussed at the department heads meeting is, in essence, this is really kind of a pilot run for this, as I think everyone can agree that the presidential election is going to you're going to see far more traffic. So if we find if we can find a solution that that works and accommodates uh, the work schedules as well as the the election and voters uh, traffic flow. I think we'll have a home run for the presidential election is where it's really going to come in handy. Yeah, I, th I think the bigger, the bigger problem for the presidential election, frankly, is, is almost more the parking than it is the office traffic. Mm -hmm. So because if you've got 
everybody in the building. They use up all the parking spots along the back of the building plus some of the front. And then voters wind up with, you know, kind of a hike in. Right. Mechanism. Right. So, um, but from an office traffic perspective, I, I mean, the, the other piece of it is that, um, and this is mostly an unrelated topic, but it's something to consider in having the office open. Um, we've had one of the... I don't remember what it was. The individuals that quote unquote audit your elections yeah, first and the more <laughs> First Amendment audits, right? And so the more people you have in the building, the more opportunity you have for something to go south. So if we are not going to close, we need to make a conscious effort to ensure everybody receives appropriate training relative to engagement with the public and those First Amendment audits. Which they did yeah, have we, the training. Yeah. So well, yeah, but, but I'm just saying, I'm they, saying active refresher as well as just. But not only did they have the training, but now we're also aware on the rules of that auditor that he can be made to stay in one particular area rather than float freely through the building like he did the first go around. So I think we're a lot wiser to that now. And I think that discussing it with Mike, uh, he's going to have a limited area and if there's multiple auditors they're going to have a limited area they're not allowed to float freely through the building so and we can designate that yeah and additionally once again at the department head meeting uh, Brad and I reemphasize that and for employees that will be working at town hall if there is a first amendment auditor the employees were instructed to tell the auditor to to wait for either myself or Mike and we would address any questions or concerns that they might have so we're basically trying to get the town employees away from from the auditors let myself and mike take care of it so that they can perform their their duties and responsibilities and mike and i can hopefully control the first amendment auditors so that they can do what is their right to do but also in a a contained and managed process exactly I frankly don't care one way or the other whether I, I we're open or not. Yeah, I don't work at the town hall, so it doesn't. Right. I mean, it, <laughs> were the department heads comfortable with it then? Because I wasn't at the meeting, so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I mean, if the department heads don't have any heartburn with it, I'll make a motion yeah, for us to no... rescind the vote of uh, 229 Second. Any discussion? All no. in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Recreation Committee appointment, Alex Olison. I'll make an, a, a motion to appoint Alex Olison to the Rec Committee. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Alternate. Yep. So, all right. I'll wait for the discussion. So, if you want to make the motion, or I'll make the motion. Yeah, you, she made the motion. Second. Run a second. Uh, discussion? Yeah. So, how does it work, Troy? Who's the. So, do you do much work in town? Uh, a little bit. I wouldn't say a lot. Okay. So, then the primary inspector will do we'll your inspections. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, applying for the position. No so, um, that's it for me. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. Good to go. All right. Uh, Americans with Disabilities Act ADA request for accommodations in packet. Yes, and uh, Mr. Chair, I can kind of yep. you know, brief, if you will, the uh, discussions that I've had with uh, around that. Um, as the board's aware, you know, approximately two weeks or so ago, the, uh, the board received an ADA request for reasonable accommodations from Mr. Kelleher. And in the request, he had indicated 
he was unable to participate in town government due to alleged harassment, uh, which had negative effects upon his, his mental and, and physical health. Um, he was unable to enter town hall without experiencing distress and concern for his safety. Once again, these are, are in his uh, request. And <clears throat> he was requesting reasonable accommodations under, under ADA uh, in order to participate in the following boards and committees. The Conservation Committee, the Planning Board, the Board of Health, the Personnel Board, the Board of Assessors, and the Advisory Committee. So upon receiving the, uh, the request, I conferred with Town Council, Michelle Rendazzo, and uh, determined with regards to the reasonable accommodations, there were really a few options that the board uh, should consider and discuss. Uh, first one was to video and audio record all of the reference committee and board meetings um, that occur at town hall, because town hall was specific in the request. And once we have those recordings to update, or excuse me, upload those recordings to the Brookfield community media website within three business days. So if we consider that option one, if you will, option two would be live streaming all the reference committee and board meetings that occur at town hall. <clears throat> that is something that we're currently starting to do. Uh, I believe we're only doing that for select board meetings at this point. So that, that is an option. Option three is to conduct what I'll refer to as interactive meetings via MS Teams or Zoom, go to meeting, those types of things. Um, once again, that occur at, at town hall for those, those committees. And then there's a fourth option, which is to provide on-site police presence or a detail for all those committees, committee meetings at town hall. My recommendation is there's pros and cons for, for each of those options. Um, a lot of them have to do with technology and the utilization of technology. Personally, I think it's a good idea maybe for the board to invite Jacob in so he can discuss the, the actual details, those pros and cons of some of those technology-related technology options. And then obviously for the, for the fourth option with police, We'd, we'd certainly want to talk to uh, Chief Blanchard to, to get his input. Yeah, and from what, another little piece of background, regardless of this, is from the state, it's probably a matter of time before we're going to be having to be adopting hybrid Zoom meetings anyways. Correct, yeah, there is pending legis uh, legislation out there for Zoom-type meetings. It seems to have, uh, it certainly hasn't passed yet. I think it right. is still in subcommittee, but there seems to be a momentum growing behind it. So I, I agree. It sounds like it's probably a matter of time before it comes our way. And, and really, the, the challenge right now is that a lot of our committee members aren't necessarily technologically literate, but if we can find a way to make it relatively easy for them, then... No. I told Jake I'd volunteer, as crazy as it sounds, to help people with that. Help people with that? <laughs> with, with Jake, with we have that recording, right? Hanging out at the meetings and running it all. <laughs> well, I would make yeah. a motion that until we can do that, uh, that we ask Mr. Kelleher to call the police department. And if they don't have anything going on, they come, they accompany to the building. And if they have to leave for a call, then they can leave for a call. But like this evening, there's two police officers on that if there's not a call, they could set with him at the town hall to ensure his safety. Um, do we want to take the yeah. question? Yeah. Well, two, hold on, because okay. we're going to allow two minutes for someone to speak Yeah. on one time. Hold on. You don't have to break time, right? Maybe less than two minutes. All right, so go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so I just want to make it abundantly clear that um, my accommodation request was never for police presence. I made the request, I believe, in the order of live streaming first, and then if that couldn't be done, then video and then upload later. And then the, the, the very bare minimum, just use a tape recorder, like a dictation, like a planning board does, and just the audio, the audio recording. 
no, no video. And that would be divided by three days. I try to make it as very easy for the town as possible to tie up uh, police resources. That's something I never even asked for. That did not come from my side of the table at all. That, that, that's correct. That was from town council as they were lining up all the possibilities to satisfy a reasonable accommodation. But my problem is he stated that he was didn't feel safe and felt like he was harassed. So to accommodate that, if the police aren't, they don't have a call, then I'm more than willing to let them accompany Mr. Kelleher to the town hall or to be in the police station here when we're having a meeting. He's the one that stated that he didn't feel safe, right? Yeah. So I think when someone makes that claim, I think we need to But I think back to Ron's point, maybe we should discuss that with Chief Blanchard because I've talked to a couple of the officers and they're not, they're not too fans. keen on it. Yeah, <laughs> so they're, not, they're probably not fans. And the other challenge with that, right, is that I think you set up a dynamic there. While yes, it's to ensure everybody's safety. One, it's unpredictable because if they have a significant call, right, they're going to be obligated to leave. Absolutely. Unless we, unless we yep. start staffing in such a manner that that in, ensures enough coverage on those nights to guarantee that somebody can be at the town hall, right? But the fact yeah. reasonable accommodation is just that, right? So if they get a call, they have to leave. Absolutely. That's a reasonable right, accommodation. But, right, but the, the flip side of that, right, since uh, it's And like, I'm just saying on the short term, not the long term. Can I finish my sentence? Thank you. Um, of course, now I don't even remember where I was going with that. Um, I, I think the other piece of it to consider is the social dynamic when we're talking about both physical safety and, and, and um, I would say, social anxiety type things, having a police officer looming over you when there's two divergent groups or parties or tension doesn't necessarily address some aspects of the request for the accommodation. Now I'm done. Rich, your turn. <laughs> so the fact that the, the wording in here is concerning to me, right? So. until we can get the accommodations set up and train the people with computer technology and Zoom and different things, that I just think it's a reasonable thing to do st regarding the statements that have been made in his letter, right? So we want this individual to feel safe and to be able to come to the meetings. However, it's been my observation in most of the interactions that Mr. Kelleher was the one that was yelling and screaming and having the police called. That, that's been my observation. So, uh, but I think, and, 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 and during those events, the police were called there anyway to settle it down. So, until we can get that videographer, uh, equipment set up, I, I just feel strong that we should make sure that Mr. Kelleher feels safe attending any time he wants to be in a town hall or police station. And, and actually one other point that's probably germane is, and I did confirm with town council, there is no timeline or deadline, if you will, with regards to the reasonable accommodations. So it's not as if we have 15 days or 30 days in which to implement something. Um, basically, we have to be progressing towards implementing something. Do we want to have Jake come up to talk about how quick he could even get anything up and going? Even if it was, even if it's just the audio, because right, because yeah. just recording the audio is an option, and it's a pretty low tech requirement, right? I mean, we could get a probably a fifty dollar like MP3 recorder and just dump it. I mean, that's. Jake, I don't do you want to come up talk, and come talk, talk about, about it? About it <laughs> right? I mean, but that's like. Do you want me to show how to use it? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, not not for nothing. Those 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 aren't hard. Yeah. Um, so I think for audio only, that's that's no problem. Um, we can we can get some sort of a 
device is just a you know record play that kind of thing yeah. um, and then that that tape can be left somewhere like maybe in the uh, cable access mailbox so then I could just upload that yeah. you know to the website um, periodically so I think that might be the like the most lo-fi kind of kind of solution yeah I mean that's the sort of thing we could probably send somebody to the store <laughs> and have it in place Tuesday yeah yeah right? I, mean, I, I can I can set that up for you guys too like tomorrow so okay that's not hard um, the, the bigger kind of the bigger project would, would be to have zoom maybe yep. um, if that's something that the state's going to require at some point um, we could set up a similar setup to what we have in the um, town administrator's office with like a display and a sound bar kind of thing nice um, we can do it with a much bigger screen which we're going to need in, in there anyway for the studio project Right. So, yeah, we could do that under the studio project part of it, and then the Zoom component we could do through IT or something like that. Okay. So. Question about the Zoom thing, sure. and I wanted to try to get you before this meeting, but I couldn't. Um, or is that going to be automatically recorded? Uh, and how are we going to house that data? Does that have to be recorded? Do we know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I could check. Yeah. I could. So, I, could so I mean, it. most of your paid Zoom accounts, right? They automatically load to your cloud space associated right. with mm -hmm. Zoom, and then it would just be a case of publishing it. Making sure we have enough of the enough enough of it. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, should, I should mention also, um, we, we have teams at, yep. at oh, Town yeah. Hall. Yeah. So and we have uh, five hundred terabytes of storage. So. Mm. We so should probably use that. Yeah, we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll keep us out of trouble yeah, I, for a bit. I, I realize, I, was, I think I was saying Zoom too, but I, there's no, yeah. no need for it to specifically be Zoom. Yeah. yeah. In fact, we set up, um, and, and I, I don't know if it worked, but I, I know that it was set up for a meeting yesterday, um, a Zoom call from here too. So I think uh, our Teams did it again, Teams call. So, but I, I think it went okay. I don't know if it went okay, but okay. So. I don't know if it went okay, but um. <laughs> well, it, it, the, the aspects of it that did not go okay were unrelated to the technology portion of the program. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, 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 well said. Well said. I've done my part then. Um, but so we, you know, we can set uh, something else up like that. Um, I think long term we may not be using this room as much. Um, that I think a significant part of the issue for, for recording the, in this space is the, the internet. Uh, is the there any way to use the Ethernet? They tried. Uh, they have it pretty locked down. So ah. Yeah. So we're. Okay. So we're. we're so are we not live on YouTube right now? We we are oh. um. Off and on. It's <laughs> yeah. I, I did the best I could to try to uh, piggyback the signal. Could, could we? I know they use a different person for their IT in this building, but it doesn't seem like it ought to be hard for them to set up a guest. Yeah, I, I, I'll talk to um, Chief Blanchard and see if we can coordinate with the CN Geeks and get yeah. permission, at least for one of those ports with that device, get access to it. Why, why, is, why do we have two different ITs? That's a That's really a good, good question, <laughs> right? Um, it, there's a long history behind it that I didn't necessarily concur with, but it, goes, it dates back to when the IT people for the town were very deeply embedded with some of the members of town government yeah. and it was a different one person show that was less um, agnostic uh, and, and a little less credible relative to access to the police drives and documentation. I think the, the chief has always been more comfortable having somebody that's more of a corporation or so Absolutely. should we have Ron talk to Chief Blanchard to yeah. see about consolidating that? Yeah, I, I think I think we're at a point where we could consider doing that. But if he's still uncomfortable, then at, at a very minimum, he needs to facilitate interactions. Yeah, I, I, I could check with the chief with regards to length of contract and things yeah. along those lines. Yeah, and for, for my side, I, I do have partners in the team. So yeah, if, if that's the concern, right. we could bid. Scope. Yep. Thank you. So, but 
yeah, I think I think what we do is we start with the audio, and then that way, you know, we've at least got that. So. And we can even uh, secure a couple of those devices so that if we had meetings running at the same time, you know, they yeah, they're cheap. Yeah, they're not a big deal. So yeah. we can do that, and then just the time to upload them. You know, I'll need probably a few days just to put them online. But I think we have what seventy. Crossers for seventy two hours or something, or three business days. Yeah, yeah. three three business days. Yeah. No problem. We can get them up before then. Well, I have. So, I believe you didn't. Did you make a motion? Yeah. I believe it was a motion. Yeah. yeah. So you can get seconded. So. <laughs> I can second it for the discussion purpose. We want to make another motion. Um, yeah, I just don't think the policing option after talking to the police is going to be an option. I well, don't. I, I don't see. I, all right. Yeah, second, and then for discussion. It doesn't seem like it's a long-ended thing. It seems like it's going to be short-term. Mm -hmm. I think this covers us with liability going forward. If we had that, and I, I'm not the one that made the statements. He didn't feel safe. He made the statements, and I think we're duly obligated to make sure that he's safe. And I think that's one way that takes care of it right away. So I'm of the opinion. You are done, right? Yes. Am I interrupting? No. I'm of the opinion that. To me, I think that may perpetuate the opportunities for conflict. However, I think it's a good option to have. I think what we do is we focus our efforts on offering the technology solutions with the mm -hmm. understanding that if Mr. Kelleher does want to attend something in person, that he has the option to contact the police and find out if somebody is available. And he can choose to go or not go, but that doesn't necessarily alleviate us of um, looking at the technology as the primary method yeah. of solution. Yeah. No, I right? agree with that because so, my mine was for the short term. Yeah. So, so my thought is fairly immediate action as soon as it's reasonable. Next, like three or four days, working days, right? And if you over deliver and it's tomorrow, that's great, but it doesn't have to be, right? We we get the audio devices, get them available to people, and and you know, a little card that says, here's how you use it, hit the, hit the record button, right? Please drop it back in my box, right? Get that in place. And then, um, but I think, you know, to your point, if we've got to go to teams, let's also start the process of getting that set up. How soon? I mean, I think you could do that almost within a couple of days, no? Um, yeah, so in terms of the teams, it's, uh, it's already set up. Right. I'd, I'd set it up for you guys. Um, for, but would they have bit. would they have to have a town email though? Because um, I don't believe we, all. We could set it up with um. Sorry, I didn't mean to yeah. interrupt. Uh, we could set it up with a like a generic email for just recording meetings. And okay. Then that would work. So and I think then what one of the things we can start to do is look at the fidelity of that, and if there's times when, you know, Jacob has a conflict or something, or, or we can't get somebody on site to record if. If that works, we can hold it as a hybrid meeting, and that also winds up being our recording, right? So, um, so it's kind of a win-win all the way around. Yeah, um, so. I, I think the the biggest thing with the recordings, uh, you're talking about like Zoom, like or Teams recordings, yeah. um, would be the, the fidelity for rebroadcast purposes. But um, you know, yeah. oh, oh, trust me, I'm not saying that that we want to get out of the habit of truly video recording. I'm just saying yeah. we, we can make them available. Right, right. So. And in terms of um, time commitment, it would be difficult for me to be at every single meeting to mm -hmm. help, but, um, but I can make an effort to be at you know, ones that are with enough advance warning that are like particularly important if we wanted the higher quality recordings. Okay. Great. Cool. Um, the only other thing, unless you know the rules, I believe there are rules around hybrid meetings like if we did it on teams like there would still have to be a quorum uh, 
present in the building. Well, actually, no, no, no. What I'm talking about is like, uh, what if someone is getting unruly on a team's meeting or there's one of the people that's on the team's meeting is making too much noise. Yeah, what are the rules that you can mute them or shoot them out? And it would, in essence, really be the same rules as if someone was actually sitting. Right. Um, so if they're being unruly, obviously, yes, you can, you can uh, mute them. Yeah. In fact, in my previous life, we did have interactive um, go-to meeting was, was the software that we, we utilized. And at the beginning of each meeting, the chairman would make a statement, make sure you're on mute. Yeah. And on the, on the monitor, you could actually see who was muted. And if someone wasn't muted, the chairman would usually just mute, mute them manually. So yeah, and all of the those, technology uh, is there too. And they, and they all have a raise your hand capability, Correct. right? right? Yep. So. Yeah, teams can, you can, we can make somebody a moderator, you can make multiple people moderators. So. Um, so I guess back, motion was made, second. second. Yep. All, all in favor? Aye. Well, I'm gonna, on, I tell you what, let me, can I, can I put an amendment, let me put in, before we vote that, can sure. I put in an amendment? Sure. So, uh, I'd like to amend the motion to be that um, we'll at least verify with the chief availability of police officers for, on request, to attend one of these meetings with 24 hours notice. Okay. I guess, I guess my problem with that is if, if the police officers are not doing anything, then he should be able to make the call to have them attend, full well knowing that if they get a call, they'll have to leave. And again, this is the extreme short term, as quick as Jacob can get something going for us and we get the computers set up so that it can happen and accommodate him, then I'm, I'm good with that. But, but I strongly feel he should be able to call the police department, say, hey, I'm going to this meeting on this date. And I think 24 hours is a reasonable time frame. But I don't think it's ask the police chief. I think we need to instruct the police chief that this is going to happen on the short term. And if the officers are available, then that needs to happen. And if there's no one available, then we can't make that reasonable accommodation. But we are moving forward rapidly and quickly to accommodate it through the means of mm -hmm. tape recording, Zoom teams, the, all the different things to make sure that this is only a, the short term. Yeah. But when you read his letter, I mean, it sounds horrific, right? So if we don't act and do something, then I fear that, feel like there's liability on the town, right? So even though he say, stated verbally tonight something different, that's not what the letter says. That's multiple pages long. So I guess I could say is I'll go for it only because I think he's going to be able to get the technology up and going okay. before okay. the next right. meeting. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, and, and, that's, and that's hopeful that that will happen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so all in favor? Aye. 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 And um, for, for clarity, do we do we want like some sort of a Zoom set up beyond a laptop or just a laptop at this point or do we know? So I think can it's, we, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, can we get that T V from Ron's office down just so people in the audience can see who's on the Zoom? Uh yeah, I mean we could we could move it down the stairs. Yeah, I guess we, we could physically, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Physically, it's, it's, it's capable. Yeah, yeah. It, you're, you're probably asking for it to to be dropped at one point. But does it make, no one want to do that as a long term <laughs> solution? Does it does it make sense for us to purchase a smaller laptop that's used and shared by all the boards and committees? Yeah. So I guess that's my question. Do we want? Yeah. Do we want to move the one from Ron's office? Do we want to I get a laptop or do we want a bigger one for down in that that room? I think yeah. we're asking for trouble transporting that. Well, yeah. I, I mean. What kind of budget do we have relative to technology? What did we wind up voting at town meeting? Um, I, I don't, I don't, I know there were some warrant articles on there, um, and we have wiggle room in some of those. Yeah. We, so, we, we could do base, I feel reasonably confident we could do 
whichever solution you think is best, and we would be okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it would be nice to have a screen at, you know, adequate to, that people in the room could also be aware of, of who's online, right? Right. I, I mean, that would be probably my preference since we'd be doing the, um, and, and honestly, if it's set up, with the team set up, hypothetically, right, if we've got anybody on those boards that has their own laptop, they could log into their team's account, you know, from from a from a personal device until we get this the screen and the official um, camera in place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah, what, for sure. And what would that be like? A couple, maybe a couple weeks to get that into the banquet hall. Um, to get a, like a, a like a display unit with a screen and everything. Yeah. Um, obviously, this isn't this is important, so we, we you know we could expedite it. We could do it within probably a week. Okay. So Labor Day yeah. sale this week then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah time well. is good, right? Yeah. So Best Buy is our best friend. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We so. don't have to wait for tax free weekend with you guys. So. <laughs> no. No, we don't. So. And I would strongly recommend once again for my my previous life. The larger the monitor, the much okay. easier it's going to be. One, not only for viewing, but also for I guess monitoring by the chairman, because you know more likely it's going to be a, quite a distance away. And if you have a lot of people, those boxes can get pretty small. It'll be hard to determine who is not muted. Right, and I mean this is something that I was going to want to bring up anyways, because heading into budget season and having that capability to show the audience what's going on with the budget. That'd be great. Live would be great. Yeah. And, and I'll say that the, the, the screen is covered under the studio project. Right. Because we need that in there anyway. Right. So um, well, that's it's what really I'm thinking. Just we just accelerate that piece of it, right? Yeah. So, so that's, that's from PEG. Correct. Well, uh, from a grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Thank okay. You. All right. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So Patty was pointing to this monitor here, but I, I think that would be difficult, right? Because if we're talking more of the setup at the town hall, we very infrequently well, meet here. Well, those are connected to a laptop, is, is how you connect them. So, if, you know, you could, in any laptop, that's how they work. So, you have the screen, so that's how you would do it. You have one at the town hall, and you have one here. So, you have the technology in both places where you could utilize that and that way you're not buying this big, huge monitor and, and worrying about bringing it from one location to another. If you utilize that, you're only taking a laptop and connecting it right through there. And you've got the technology already in place to be able to, for people to view. So that might be an option to try and save the town money. I'm going to defer to... Well, the problem is I don't think technology-wise we can hook up to that right now because we're on different IT and we don't have the ability to get into that. Um, sorry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> they can't hear me. There with us. Um, so, yeah, actually, interestingly, I, I, I looked at that while I was here, um, and we can actually hook into that um, without any having to go through IT here. Okay. So, but only, obviously, in this room. Um, right. It's probably a similar cost to set this up those are compared to it. Right, those are pretty expensive. Yeah. Right now, monitors come down Yeah, so TVs far. are yeah. cheap. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> One of the things I also want to bring to your attention, if you look at the way the room is set up, that projection would be behind you all. And you, actually, Rich and Beth would probably be a, a shadow <laughs> against yeah, we'd that. To, we'd have to reorganize. So, yeah, you'd have to re reconfigure the room. Or a short throw. Mm -hmm. a short So it's my recommendation, you, you do what's best for us, right? <laughs> Whether we utilize this here yeah. and we utilize something different at the town hall, but we're going to leave that up to you. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank Thanks. you, Jacob. All right. Uh, discuss complaint regarding town employee official in packet. Ron. Uh, yep, I can kind of brief you guys on that as well. 
Um, as you're aware, uh, we did receive a complaint against a former employee and current town official um, from Mr. Kelleher that was dated back on August 21st, 2024, regarding the alleged misconduct and financial improprieties of a former employee and current town official. Uh, the alleged misconduct and financial improprieties are in regards to the purchase of safety jackets for the Conservation Commission, um, and actually dated back to the spring of 2023. And there was a whole litany of, um, uh, I guess, continued activity, bringing it up to more current date, but the origins were back in the spring of 2023. Uh, specifically, the alleged financial improprieties, improprieties are in regards to financial reimbursement for the purchasing uh, in, uh, surrounding those safety jackets. Uh, as a result of the complaint, so Select Board Chair Mr. Kodelsky asked me to look into the accusations. Uh, I did discuss the, the matter in, in decent amount of detail with the former employee and current town official, as well as the town, a town, uh, town accountant, Ms. Uh, Bartkiss. Uh, who was mentioned prominently in the in the complaint. Uh, the former employee in town uh, official vehemently denied any and all accusations lev levied against her in the complaint. Um, my subsequent discussion with Ms. Barkus, um, she had indicated she never recalled receiving a voucher for reimbursement from the former em uh, employee in town official. Uh, she also was adamant that the former employee and current town official never received any uh, reimbursement, not one penny, um, from the town for the uh, safety jackets or purchase related to that. So based upon that, uh, my findings regarding the complaint are uh, whether or not the former employee town, uh, current town official ever agreed to the purchase of safety jackets for the Conservation Commission is really immaterial. Uh, reason being is this task is not included in the job description that the, uh, was formerly held by this person, nor was it an, an inherent duty for that person uh, w uh, when they were employed by the town. Uh, additionally, the, the task is not included in the regular responsibilities for the position that they currently hold. Uh, as a result, I see no reason to discipline the former employee or current town uh, official on that <clears throat> that particular matter in the complaint. Uh, additionally, I found no evidence of any financial improprieties uh, or even an attempt at a financial impropriety on the part of the former employee and current town official. Uh, additionally, the statements of the town accountant support the former employee and town official <clears throat> assertions that the complaint was unfounded. And once again, as a result of this, I see no reason for discipline of the former employee and town uh, official. So the only thing, the other thing I looked into when looking at this is, because I'm under the impression that the Conservation Commission's looking to buy something, um, the vests. I've talked to police, fire, and town highway. They all have vests, so I think I don't think there's a need to even buy the vests in general because we have them readily accessible in three different locations and if people want them for a site visit. And to piggyback on top of that, in discussing this matter with the town accountant, she had indicated she never would have approved a voucher for that um, because the source would have been the wetlands funds. And she said that's not a legal use of the, of the wetland funds. So it would have been rejected in that regard. So I guess that lends that much more credibility to, unless the Conservation Commission has a fairly large expense account, which I don't believe they do, it makes sense that if there's our safety concerns, to they coordinate department. with one of those departments to get a hold of them when they do a site visit. Exactly. <coughs> Anything else? Well, I want to make a statement uh, regarding this employee. She has done a good job anytime I've witnessed any of the interactions. She is now on several of the committees in town. She's extremely diligent, highly intelligent, does everything she's asked, never had a problem. And uh, I. I can't imagine this letter was even written. It 
it's not worth the paper it was written on, in my opinion. All right. Uh, item number six. I have a question on this topic. Sure. If I may. Um, how many pages was this complaint? No, a letter. Does anyone know offhand? 46. 46. Uh, that 46. sounds about right. Yeah, it was very, very, very long. Yes. No, I have right. them. Yeah. yeah, and I have it in email. Yeah. Yeah. Could, I have that? Could I get a copy of that after the meeting? Yeah, I, I would say once. once a, yeah, one, once. Yeah, once and we have the, the minutes. Have a copy God. How much time did each one of you spend on this topic? On this letter of complaint, it's a 46 page complaint. That was unfounded. How much time did you spend on that? I personally have not spent much time. I breezed through the bulk of it and just immediately my opinion of it was it was nothing to be founded at all. No, no credibility to it. But, but, but my personally, so but as far as Ron, and uh, I, I would suggest it'd probably be quite a bit of time. Yeah, there, there was hours, hours spent investigating, um, talking to the parties involved, um, getting re retrieving documents and, and evidence along those lines. It, it was, if the question was, was it taken seriously? Yes, it was. And no, that wasn't the question. The question was, is that it, it was unfounded and it was a waste of time, and that something should be done regarding a letter, a 46-page letter, that someone sent in of unfounded accusations for the person who sent it in. I don't think you can really well, prohibit well, that. Well, it's yeah, a complaint's yeah. a complaint. Well, so, you, so the problem is that there's, there's no way with all the substantiation that was attached. Well, we may be making a determination not to take action because in any discussion or observation there can be two sides to the story. The 46 pages did include um, what could be construed by a reasonable person to indicate that it was indeed a, a substantive complaint. A reasonable person would have written 46 pages that cut face facts, number one. Number two, it, it it shows that somebody continues to cry wolf and no one is doing anything about it. We have two minutes yet. And you know what? Your attitude is horrible to just pacify it because that's what you just did by saying that. You can't pacify someone, someone's behavior that is crying out for help or is just here to cause trouble. I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here to explain to you that there is an issue here because it's not the first time this person has put a complaint in that has been unfounded. But you're continuing to allow it to take up the time of this town. Well, And you need to do something about that. All right. Yeah, I, I just, can I just respond yeah. quickly? I, I, I don't think there's any way we could stop someone from putting a letter of complaint in, right? I agree, where does it become harassment versus legitimate? I don't know if we're at that threshold yet, but for now we're just gonna, for lack of a better word, we're saying we're gonna kick the can down the road. We, the town administrator has looked into it, he's done all the due diligence, and we have no finding at this time. So, that's all. But that, that, that time is coming that it's harassment. I think the way our policy is written is we're not supposed to do back and forth, we're not supposed to be doing it. Correct. <laughs> so I just want to clarify some facts. The, the complaint itself is not 46 pages. The complaint itself, I believe, is either eight or nine pages, and the remaining of the pages is... Um, the supporting material. The supporting, the supporting the complaint, like copies of text, copies of the Amazon pages. I think it's like nine pages of just the Amazon product itself. Um, copies of emails, copies of meeting minutes, copies of agendas. So that way there, the, the time to the board would spend 
research in this would have been limited. This took me a week. You want to talk about time? It took me a week to, to get it done. And yes, fine. If the town finds no finding on the financial, but there is no question that the commission was given different information at different times. I provided you with those YouTube links, and you now maybe that's not a, that's not a violation under the the accounting and the financials, but it's it's clear as day when you say you know I did this, and then months later you say no I didn't. You know I'm gonna do this. I ordered it. I didn't order it. I'm not gonna order it. I did order it. it I don't have the order. The order was placed. It wasn't placed. That's factual. Um, and if, if, it, 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 it tears me up inside because the person I made the claim about, I, I held them in, in, in regard. So it's unfortunate. It really is. It's not, it's not like I want to sit here and write a complaint. I really don't. But when, it, when I go to the, when I see that conservation commission like you're saying that they're going to do best, and someone says, oh, I'm not going to order them because they were $80 a piece, and absolutely not. And I was told multiple times, multiple times on multiple different platforms, yeah, they're ordered, they're at my house, I'm, I'm not going to bring them down, whatever, whatever, whatever. I saw that as probably the, the, the part of the seriousness of the complaint. So. Okay. Can I get one other answer to you? Okay. Why, why, um, why was this not resolved at the com commission? And why was it, why are we just bringing this up now? Why is this surface now? Why did the chairman of the conservation didn't why didn't he discuss this with the, with the member that is being accused? Why has this not been brought forward until now? I can answer that if you want. I don't know if I want to continue all the going back and forth. No. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't have an answer. He took so, the time to put the complaint down. Yeah. So if, he, if, if, if the prior chair wants to address you, Brad, I think we're still within the confines, but then we're starting to hit well, we're right at, it was, it was a minute and 52 seconds, so. I can do it in, in 10 seconds. The reason it's brought up now is because at the last Conservation Commission meeting, the jackets was brought up again, and they said that they were $80 a piece when they were 40 and they made the declaration that I absolutely not did order them, which contradicts what we were told for almost a year. That's why it's brought up now. All right. Discussion, upgrade of the, or no, sorry, resignation of uh, Personnel Board Holly Chisholm. We need a motion to accept this, or is it nope. just one sheet? No, we just it. acknowledge it and with regrets. Can you send her a note? We send her a note. Did she express anything other than personal reasons to anybody? I have no idea. I, I wasn't aware, and I meant no. to seek her out, and I haven't. Really? No. She, that's exactly what she told me. It's like she put in that email. She don't want to talk to her right now. Um, the only thing I'd like to bring up about it, so now that creates a vacancy. I know you option to go on the personnel. However, I don't know if you want to. We have to post it as a select board meeting. That's I don't want to have no. anything to do with that. Okay. No, because <laughs> no, even if we post it as a working meeting, I guess we could. I mean, we could, but there'd be no agenda other than the personnel meeting agenda. It would allow me to stay on for the full year rather than you cut me out at six months. So. I don't see why we wouldn't, but you know, that's. How many people do we have on right now? Karen? I don't know off the top of my head. I, it's in my computer. I think there's, there, there's room. It's, I think we could at least five. I, I want to say there's four on right yeah, now. Four, yeah. Well, let's put it on a follow, uh, on okay. what, next available agenda. Uh, discussion, upgrade, highway department cameras so I reached out to Jacob the other day and he was able to send me a packet to with some upgrades to the cameras as well as the computer system down there I believe it's in excess of 20 years old the the cameras are poor grade now for the technology uh, it was I didn't go through the I whole know they, thing. I know they need to be updated. <laughs> so I'll forward, or I'll, for, I'll give the information to Ron, and he can forward it to you guys. But we don't need to make a decision tonight, but I just wanted to kind of get the ball rolling mm. so we can do some upgrades down there. Um, I just have a question on the cameras. 
and I guess this kind of ties into Town Hall too, do we have the ability to, how do we access those videos? Because yeah. I know like with some security systems, like you can, I, I could look it up from my phone. Because like I, I've gotten calls like, why are there people at the highway department on a Sunday? And I have no idea why. And I could actually look and see what was happening. <laughs> Sure. And I guess the other part of that, are we using a vendor or is this something you're doing? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm managing it for you guys. Um, so Mike Siri has access um, and I have access. Um, it was, it was, there was a thought that, and I've seen this in other towns where if it's not, you know, if it's an employee has access to edit and delete, uh, that there are concerns that if the videos need to be used in court or something like that, that there could be some risks. Um, right. And so generally, I, you know, I'll manage them that way. And what I can do is I can lock the files with a hash is function. There, is there a, just a viewing only, mo mobile viewing only? <laughs> yeah. So so we, I created a, that's what I did. And, and I had given that to Mike because um, yeah. he had had access to the old system. So I figured I would maintain that continuity. And I ran that by... Um, all of this by you know Ron when when we were finishing setting up the the system. Um, if if we need to provide access to other people, we we can do that too. Yeah. I think it's kind of a slippery slope for everyone to have access to it. I would be more in favor of just like you say your, yourself, someone else, maybe that other person, and just be Brad. But I don't think that the, the viewing portion of it should just go out to now I could just go to the town hall and talk to Mike and look at something well, that yeah. was a question at either you or Ron or both yeah yeah I think, I think having the chair and the town yeah and I would be okay have an access would make sense yeah sure. yeah okay yeah we can I just wouldn't can. want it out to multiple boards or, uh, yeah. no 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 yeah, yeah. right exactly yeah yeah um I'm not I'm not a fan of opening it up completely but absolutely we can give it to a, a few people and was there another, I think there was another question about something maybe? I don't know. The, um, highways no, just, cameras or? Oh yeah. Those highways cameras. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I did print out copies of the proposal for everybody, so. Is that in here? Um, there's a stack underneath. Oh. Yeah. Keeping it all to myself. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry it's not on official proposal okay. letterhead. It's just had to do it quickly. So. And so this would come from their department budget. I'm I'm not sure how it's. Uh, that was the other thing we need to figure out where we would get the money. But this is the beginning stage. Yeah, I I will say that the um the recording box itself, the server, is not uh we're not meeting our legal requirement. So we we do need to if we're going to be recording, we have to store it for at least thirty days. Right. I thought um, the recorded there was 30 days. It doesn't. I looked. It. it I looked today. It doesn't. Um, okay. It doesn't maintain it long enough. Okay. Yeah. It tries. <laughs> okay. It's just antiquated. Yeah. It's just too old. Yeah. Okay. So we'll table this for now, and we'll come back to it, Brad. Or how do well, you want to handle? Well, actually, I'd like to make a motion that we identify a funding source and pursue phase one because we've got to do that no matter what just to get compliant even if we leave the current cameras in place right okay. so I, i'd like to make a motion to uh, 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 ron can you mind can you take the action to to yeah, get I, with the accountant and see in fact i was going to remind you all that, that we do have arpa money that needs to be allocated prior to the end of the Ooh, calendar year good, good and it's source. actually a, a, a it's actually a uh, it's a good like filler block in terms of money so I, I, can I let me finish that motion let's actually do we want to just allocate what what level cameras would we want do we want to go middle tier two so we've actually got because we've had some problems in the past where we couldn't delineate what really occurred well the the night vision is really important to me. Well, so, well, all of them have night vision, but it's just well, the amount. Yeah, two and three has. have illuminated. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
from from my technical perspective, there's a pretty significant difference between tiers one and tier two. Yeah. Tier two and tier three are more subtle. Right. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was thinking tier two, <coughs> just because I don't think we need the Cadillac. Right. But I do want something that's at least as good as my Kia. <laughs> right. I don't sure. want a Yugo. Yeah. Yugo would be bad. Yeah. If I may, Jacob, is there a difference between tier two and three with regards to being able to say read a license plate off of a vehicle? Um, yeah. So you, in order to do that, some of that is is going to be. Yeah, th there would, there, yeah, um, some of it can be, but some of it, uh, I would say license plates are going to be, if, if you catch them straight on, you'll be okay with tier two. Um, if, if it's a motion, you know, where they're driving quickly by, we would want to go to tier three. I didn't list it, but tier three is also sig substantially faster in terms of frames per second. So it's about double the frames per second. So we can stop and catch images much more clearly. Um, I and think uh, I think you know with using the opera money, I have no problem going with the tier three. Yeah. Okay. I think if we're going to do it, there's no sense in doing it. We yeah, we can't for... read what's going on. Yeah, yeah. and there's um, I just want to point out there's some AI detection features on that which are kind of nice. Um, you know, really? Put a box with Tells a name, it it'll is. tell you basically. <laughs> yeah, you can train it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of uh, neat. So. Yeah. I'm not sure. I like living in the future. To I know. The truth. I know. Yeah. <laughs> So, do you okay, want to redo so, your motion? Yeah, I'll that? make a motion that we uh, that we allocate. What does that come out to be total? So that's uh, fifty-seven fifty plus seventy-five hundred. Is that right? Plus twenty-six twenty-five for install. Oh yeah. Yeah, we have to run uh, better cabling through the building. Right, right now, it's just I low end coax. Was free. <laughs> hey now. <laughs> So I'm going to make a motion that we allocate $16,000 worth of ARPA money to uh, execute the uh, upgrade of the uh, highway cameras to a Tier 3 configuration as proposed on the email. Second. Um, how, but how are we as far as getting other bids? So do we meet the criteria? Do we need to get... Doesn't it have to be... Isn't it 30,000? Well, I think anything over 10,000 10, 10, is a limit for getting mm, written it's quotes. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I think we, we, we went over the threshold. Yeah. I mean, we could get queued if you want to do it in... Break it up, <laughs> but... In different tiers. Yeah, but I don't... Yeah, you know what? But, I don't want to... But wanna... that's deceitful, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so let's, let's put it out the quote. I mean, this gave us a ROM in order to, to set what our budget is expected. Right, so yep. we can earmark sixteen thousand, which is me rounding up from fifteen eight seventy five, right? And then let's let's put some quotes out there. Can do. So. And if we over allocate, then we can just I mean, rescind the that. end of the year. We can rescind that balance and put it back in DARPA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have till the end of the year. Uh, so any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Actually, you know, I said that, and now I'm talking myself out of a part of that. Okay. Which is, I think we still go out the quote for the cameras, but I actually would feel more comfortable with Jacob doing phase one and getting the server in their place for us. And that would actually still be over the ten grand to do the cameras. So, so can I? provide an amendment to the motion that we well, authorize him to do phase one and just put the second half out the bid. Can we, can I just ask a question before yeah. you make a motion? Today? Sure, absolutely. So what, if anything, would work there? If, would the, if we just replace the box that's holding the tank, if we just replace that and that is the 5750? Yep. Yep. And that includes the installation of that would, one. Would that then allow us to use the cameras that are in place? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that's why I'm proposing so that. Yeah, our, um, then, so that's, yeah that, that's exactly why I'm proposing yeah, that. So then we, yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Yeah, our, our so servers can handle um, coaxial connections and... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's, and that's exactly why I'm proposing it, because then we can get the cameras well, in service. Well, we meet service. their requirement. Right. right? Exactly. And, then, and then we can put the Upgrade other half the of it. cameras later. Yeah. 
Well, we can. We can put that out the bid so that way mm -hmm. we don't trip over the, yeah. the... But we also don't have the delay in starting to execute it that we have for going out the contract. Mm -hmm. Right. And for what it's worth, um, I, I think that makes a lot of sense because the, the cameras are a involved project yeah. over there. If it's all hidden behind installation, you're not actually pulling. Okay. So, so that also... Yeah, so it'll be interesting. So, so if somebody else gets that... Y y your your heart's not your heart's not broken, yeah, right? On a ladder and <laughs> yeah. this weather is not. Yeah. I got gotcha. you, got gotcha. you. So let's 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 do that that way because that way we we get compliant quicker. We're still not tripping over the 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 bid compliance, and because we're we're we are going to still do the rest of the project quoted out. It doesn't it, it doesn't smack too much of nepotism. Yeah. So. Sure. And cameras are all. Over. Yeah, but you're not going to get, you I know, don't know fourteen forty. I can't guarantee. It. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. So is that a motion? Or? That's a motion. Yeah, my motion would be that we split this up into two phases: uh, phase one to do the servers, phase two to be sent out to quote to get ten cameras. And I do, I would like Jacob to work with Ron on the specs for the mm -hmm. phase two, yeah. um, just from a perspective of ensuring that we. Uh, Getting apples for apples. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And then uh, items not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours or more in advance. Um, looking for a motion to approve and release the 8124 executive I'll session minutes. I'll make it a motion to release the 8124 executive minutes. Second. Approve and release. Approve and release, release yes. Sorry. Uh, all in favor? I'm not going to, so we got a second with discussion, right? So I did not sure. read those yet, so okay. I'm not going to partake in it. So you can either wait for me one more week or we could, you guys can take the vote, but I'm going to abstain. I only want to put it through because we got a lot of people looking for them. <laughs> it's your call. I haven't heard, so. <laughs> all right. If it makes you feel better, I have reviewed them as well, and Karen was spot on. Yep. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.